Today we're going to discuss one of the most beautiful theorems in mathematics, I would argue, which is uh, known as Solomonoff Completeness Theorem, uh, which basically says that the Solomonoff induction approach is the ultimate solution to uh, making predictions. At least it has extremely nice properties that uh, are essentially impossible to beat. And we're going to discuss more of this in future videos as well. Now, just to recall, in Solomonoff induction, we consider all theories that are computable and that make probabilistic predictions instead of deterministic predictions. So instead of saying the next uh, data that we're going to observe is going to be uh, a one with probability one, maybe we're going to say that uh, the probability of the next bit to be observed is going to be one with probability 90% as is done, for instance, for uh, the weather forecast. In order to make uh, these predictions, we assume that we have these data that are digitalized, so it's just a sequence of zeros and ones, and we want to use previously observed data to make predictions about future data. And the way we're going to do this is by setting up a higher probability distribution on all computable probabilistic prediction theories, and this prior can be defined using a universal Turing machine as we did it in a previous video. And then we're going to apply Bayes' rule to determine which theories are most believable given the observed data. And then we're going to apply the law of total probabilities, which is this other equation I have in my hat, to make the predictions about the future data. Now, this is a very nice framework and it is extremely compelling if you believe in probability theory and if you give importance to computational rules. But I've met a lot of people who argue that we should not take probability theory that seriously or at least that there are other things than probability theory that we should invoke in our reasonings. And I've met also people who don't give a lot of importance to computation. So how can I get them to take very seriously these equations I have on my hat? Well, one way to get their attention, I guess, is to show them that this framework has very, very desirable properties, actually very surprising properties that perform extremely well. And the most beautiful of these properties, I would argue, is Solomonoff's completeness theorem that says essentially that the sum of all future errors of predictions we're going to make is going to be upper bounded by some right hand term, which is essentially the complexity of the world, or rather, uh, as I would call it, the sophistication of the collected data. So let's dig a little bit more into what I mean by that. First, we're going to assume that there's some truth out there, that there's some T-star theory that is the theory that we want to make the same predictions as. And, and so then the question we may ask is how far are we from the actual theory using our framework? So assume you have someone who applies exactly uh, the computation of Solonov. Uh, uh, I like to call this person a Solonov demon. So let's assume the Solonov demon is doing the computation of Solonov and makes the prediction that uh, is uh, dictated by the equation of Solomonov. How far is the predictions of Solonov's demon from the actual predictions of the actual true theory T star? Well, we need to measure how the distance between these two and one natural way to do this is through the so-called KL divergence. So the KL divergence is a very usual tool, a very basic tool to make uh, the comparison between the probability predictions of two different theories. Here the two theories and the theory and the prediction of the uh, sum of Zeeman. But if you don't know about KL divergence, just keep in mind that it is a very natural way to make the comparisons that it is uh, uh, related to ideas from entropy and uh, code compressions and stuff like this. In any case, it is a non-negative measure that's going to be equal to zero if and only if we make the exact right prediction, and that's going to take larger and larger values if we make poorer and poorer uh, predictions, namely if the prediction of the Solomonov demon is off very far remote from the predictions of uh, the true theory T star. And what we would want is arguably to say that this difference here, the K divergence between these two predictions is going to go to zero. Well, it does with probability one. That's another theorem. That's not the theorem I'm going to prove today. It's not Solomonov's completeness theorem. Solomonov's completeness theorem says that if you add up all the errors that the Solomonov demon is going to make over all of its lifetime, and if you take the expectation of this, because we still assume that the data is a bit random, that even the true theory is, uh, we assume, is not complete, it, it's not predicting with probability one, it is still probabilistic. And if you assume this, then the total errors that we're going to make throughout the lifetime of the Solomonov demon 
its total errors is going to be not infinite, it's going to be bounded, it's going to be finite. This is spectacular because you're making predictions over and over and actually you don't make that many errors in the end. And better than this, Solonov proved that the total amount of errors was actually small in some rigorous sense. It is actually smaller than the so-called complexity of the true theories T star. But essentially, what this equation says is that Solonov's demon is going to be making a few mistakes, but not that many mistakes, and it's going to get it right very quickly. This theorem is absolutely astonishing. And it really shows that there's something really, really nice at work here. And in particular, the laws of probability theories are combining very nicely to uh, make the right predictions. Now, one thing I should add is that here we're assuming that the Solomon of Demon has infinite computational power. That's why I call it a, a demon that, that allows the Solomon of Demon to carry out all of these computations. Uh, in practice, with finite computational power, these are computations that we will not be able to make. And actually, it's even worse than that because Solomon's computation is so-called incomputable, but we'll discuss this in a future video.